has been provided to the Coast Star, the official newspaper of the Borough of Belmar, and the Asbury Park Press on December 13, 2023. A notice of this meeting was posted on the bulletin board of the municipal building. Take roll call, Councilman Donovan? Here. Councilman McKinney? Here. Mayor Babapusco? Here. Councilman Rodanero? Here. Councilman Levis? Here. And please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing for a moment of silence for our for troops, their families, our first responders, and longtime resident Matt Sharon. And the victims of the Maryland Bank Bridge crash. Thank you. to have an announcement real quick and then we're going to work walk into the, work into the workshop. Hi everyone, uh, before we get started, uh, we just wanted to make sure to announce while we have everyone here that there will be a town hall meeting here at Taylor Pavilion on Thursday, April 18th at 7 p.m. Uh, to give an update on the ongoing Verizon situation. We will have a featured speaker of Scott McAuliffe who is the attorney representing our Belmar residents who are successfully intervening in Verizon's lawsuit against Monmouth County. Um, we have elected officials coming from the county and our surrounding towns, and we'd really like everyone to not only show up, but to spread the word to your neighbors and uh, encourage everyone to come by. Thank you. Okay, thanks, and if you can make it, please be there. Okay, okay uh, workshop, we're going to start off with honoring our St. Rose High School basketball team and our uh, shot put champion, Josh Heisman. So I'd like to read the resolution 
honoring St. Rose High School Boys Basketball New Jersey non-public B state champs. Whereas St. Rose High School provides the opportunity for young men and women from our community and surrounding towns to participate in organized interscholastic athletic programs and Whereas the St. Rose High School boys basketball team had a stellar 2023-24 season, bringing honor to St. Rose and the Belmar community, finishing with a record of 29-2, and, and finishing number one in the state of New Jersey and number nine in the country. Whereas on March 8, 2024, the St. Rose High School boys basketball team won the New Jersey State Inter-Athletic Association, I think, non-public B state championship, defeating Montclair Immaculate 73 to 29. And whereas the following team members of the 23-24 St. Rose High School boys basketball team are to be congratulated for their accomplishment, Matt Hodge, Jaden Hodge, Evan Romano, Avery Lynch, Gio Panzini, Brian Eveling, Matt Breen, Tyler Hager, Luke Roman, Nick Perrone, Chris Bartholomew, Brennan Sherman, Warren Campbell, Andrew Romano, Ryan Dudas, Tyler Cameron, Patrick Hansen, and whereas the St. Rose Boys High School team was led to victory by coaches Brian Lynch, Patrick Lynch, Anthony Latesta, Lawrence Schuler, Tom Fox, and manager Brendan Brophy, and whereas the mayor and council of the borough of Belmar are so proud to pay special tribute to these young men who won the B Coastal Division, the Shore Conference Tournament, the Southern Regional Non-Public B, and the New Jersey Non-Public B State Championships. Now therefore be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Belmar and the residents of Belmar that they join with the St. Rose student body, teachers, and administration and commend and congratulate the 2023-24 St. Rose boys basketball team for their outstanding performance and accomplishments.
we had our structural engineers come actually today uh, to uh, take a look at it. But in any event, just from looking at what was under the, uh, the gazebo supporting it, it seemed like the uh, number of posts had dry rotted. And due to the high winds that we've had recently, uh, the gazebo kind of moved off of its their piling. So uh, we need to repair that before we can uh, allow people to go on there. So for safety reasons, it's it's been closed, and I'm hoping we're going to get that done, you know, sooner rather than later. So any updates on that? I, I believe they're coming Thursday, Bill. Uh, yeah, Thursday. Yes, yeah, so we should know by the end of the week exactly what we're looking at. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we had a kind of an unofficial look by our engineer, Jim Morris, and he said, you know, he would recommend that we get one of his structural guys to take a look at it and tell us exactly what <clears throat> needs to be done. So. Um, that's where that is. And I, I just have a quick question. So yeah. I'm assuming it's closed. You can't go in the gazebo. Did they close it off to public traffic or? Yeah, there's okay. two boards and then okay. there's a sign that says do not enter. Okay. So uh, fortunately, I think we, it does, it's not interfering with anything. I think we had one uh, wedding that had to be uh, told they, they couldn't do that. But um, uh, fortunately, we didn't have any other things reserved for that. So hopefully we'll get it done in time for the uh, seafood festival right, seafood so, um, <laughs> so that's that um i don't really have anything other to, to, to add um we can move on then to um petitions we have not received any petitions okay approval of minutes can i have a motion to approve the minutes of the march 12th meeting make a motion Second. Councilman Donovan? Yes. Councilman McKinney? Yes. Mayor Bob Fusco? Yes. Councilman Rodanero? Yes. Councilman Levin? Yes. Okay, reports of council. Uh, Councilman Donovan? Um, hi, everyone. Uh, we're doing a lot of really exciting work at the Belmar Environmental Commission. Uh, working with the borough, we've sent a request to the Army Corps of Engineers to do a free evaluation of Silver Lake, which is a very exciting step in that process. Um, we are urging any homeowners who think that guess, geese may be nesting in their yards to contact the BEC as we track them. We want to track them before they start laying eggs too. Uh, you can contact them on the BEC on Facebook or you can reach out to me directly. Um, the Sustainable Jersey Initiative is already reaping benefits. We found out today that Belmar has been selected for a free corridor or neighborhood complete streets assessment which helps assess needs and opportunities for a small neighborhood or corridor and includes a workshop on like about, about a half mile length of road to identify potential pedestrian and bicycle improvements. So that's a free thing that we're getting into the community because of the work we've been doing. And then finally, I'm very excited to announce that we will be hosting a community cleanup at Silver Lake on Saturday, April 27th from 11 to 1 p.m. meeting approximately near the gazebo. Um, <laughs> uh, this is a great opportunity for everyone who's been asking how they can get involved and literally roll up your sleeves and get to work. Uh, we're hoping to follow up with some type of small scale planting community project that won't interfere with some of the larger scale plans for a living shoreline once we acquire the appropriate funding for that. But you can follow the BEC on Facebook for more information along with environmentally friendly tips and pictures of adorable animals. Um, <laughs> we have a new tourism booth coming to the boardwalk this summer. Um, businesses who are interested in providing materials to the booth or to, for our staff member to hand out there should contact John Walsh in the back there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and sign-ups will start this week for the town-wide spring yard sale, which will be the first weekend in May, the 4th and the 5th. Um, and finally, don't forget we have Seafood Festival coming up, and that will be the weekend of May 17th. Thank you. Councilwoman McKinney. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so at our last Shade Tree Commission, we had discussed um, meeting with the borough administrator about figuring out our plantings and what we're going to be doing for when the piano comes. So I'm going, we actually had a meeting today and it was very productive. I just am going to pass it off to business administrator Kane if you'd like to just comment on the meeting and the progress we made. 
Yeah, basically what we talked about was just taking the Piano Plaza area and all, all the grassy areas, redoing. There's a lot of dead trees in there, a lot of overgrown trees. So the shade tree uh, commission has got to take a look at, at a plan to to redo that entire area as we, you know, do we you know, put the piano in there with the new pavers and all that. So really, it's just a just a spruce up of, of the entire Piano Plaza area. And that construction has already begun with the. Plaza for the stage for the piano. For the platform, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, 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 um, the piano is going to sit on a 16 by 16, 16 inches high platform in the middle of the piano plaza, and the construction of the platform area has started. Um, the foundations have been dug out, more the walls have been built, and uh, the contractor is going to. Uh, the electric, they run electrical conduit, you know, to run from the from the light, and then the uh, contractor will come back in and finish the top, and it'll be ready for the when the piano arrives. Which is not yet. The Which piano. We haven't defined exactly. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, the piano is not in New Jersey. As far as we know, right. um, you know, there's no confirmation that where the piano physically is. So. Yeah. Until we receive that, yeah, I'm not going to Okay, great. Thanks for the update on that. Okay. Um, recreation tennis camp sign-ups start April 1st. Summer tennis lessons uh, sign-ups start April 1st. Kids running clubs sign-ups are happening now, as well as junior guards. Um, the Easter egg hunt was a huge success. Over 200 kids were down there, lots of eggs. And summer camp uh, sold out pretty much the same night it opened. So summer camp's just super popular and we look forward to another really fun and exciting summer camp for the kids. Um, uh, real quick around the schools, they're, all the kids are off next week starting on, uh, St. Rose is done Thursday, the rest of Belmont Elementary is done on Friday. They didn't have any updates for me, but I did want to announce a few things between the St. Rose schools. There is a clothing drive. I'd like to pass that off to the, to the elementary school too. Another clothing drive, April 13th, in the St. Rose parking lot. Um, any old clothes, sheets, towel, things that you have, please do. Um, that goes by weight, so they get to, to uh, you know, kind of, it's a good fundraiser for the school. And St. Rose High School is doing a runway for Rose's fashion show on Sunday the 14th. This is, this is um, student models and fashions from all our local businesses around the area. And tickets for that are $25, and you can buy tickets on the website. Um, and lastly, I just want to talk about our skate park fundraiser. Our very first skate park fundraiser was this past weekend. The Volkers were there. It was nice to see you there. Um, lots of local people, lots of community support, and haters. Um, I mean, it was really heartwarming. It was an awful day in terms of weather, but um, we still were able to manage having over 200 people come through. We had three bands play. Uh, we sold lots of t-shirts. We gave out lots of giveaways. Our 50-50 was, uh, I think the winning 50-50 pot was like over $650, of which of this very nice gentleman donated it all back to the skate park, which was so awesome. Another heartwarming thing. And we are like at around $10,000 now, which is a good kickoff. You know, it's not a, a big, big, big amount of money for our first fundraiser, but we were Excited to get the first one under our belt, work out the kinks, try to figure out what we did right, what we did wrong, and to work towards future fundraisers and events, and then obviously donations and working on grants and all of those things that come further, but we're excited, and I just want to thank everybody who made that possible, all the donations that we got, all the sponsors, all the businesses, and of course all our local community that came out, so thank you so much for the support. And that's it. Councilwoman Ronda Narrow. Uh, yes, that was a blast um, at the, the skate park um, fundraiser. And please, if you can come out to any of these fundraisers, this is going to be a wonderful skate park that we'll all be very proud of um, when it's completed. So thank you so much. Thank you for the skate park committee and the friends of the Belmar Skate Park as well. Um, I was also uh, able to attend, and the mayor spoke, at the COVID Memorial's fourth annual ceremony at Allaire State Farm. Um, this weekend, and uh, that started on the Belmar Beachfront, and now the first permanent COVID memorial in the U.S. Um, is at Allaire State Farm, um, and we thank Rima and Travis Whitaker for creating a memorial that helps so many grieving families who lost loved ones during the pandemic, um, and we're honored that it started here at Belmar. The library has some great events coming up. 
Uh, tomorrow, there's a wonderful author time. Zach Levy is a high school student. Um, he's a senior, and he wrote a book last year about homelessness um, in Monmouth County called Unhoused. And um, he spent a year interviewing homeless people in shelters and in soup kitchens all around Monmouth County. It's a wonderful book. I've read it myself. I would love if you could come 6 p.m. Um, at the library to learn more about um, homelessness in our area or even just to give this gentleman some support um, since he's, he's doing the work at a real young age. Uh, parents and grandparents, ready to learn how to invest your hard-earned money for successful financial planning for your children's future? Now is the time to get started with professional financial and portfolio advisor Angela Brabinski. Uh, Saturday, April 6th at 10 a.m., live at the library. You can see when Lewis writes these. He's <laughs> real good. It's like our own commercial. Um, and you can register to attend on the library website. Uh, the library is happy to host and to present local readers. Uh, the Writer's Block Spring Book Fair, Saturday, April 13th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., featuring 30 local New Jersey Shore authors and their books. This is a great opportunity to meet local authors and support their work, get signed copies of their books, and for people in the local publishing industry to network with others. The event is free and open to the public at Taylor Pavilion. April is National Poetry Month and the library is adding to its Living History series with Edgar Allan Poe as portrayed by historian actor Bob Gleason of the American Historical <coughs> Theater Saturday, April 27th at 11 a.m. Um, hold the date info and full announcement details will be posted on the website and Facebook shortly. Uh, finally, a final reminder to make sure that you have your say in the library's strategic plan project. The input from the public is a valuable tool um, so we can develop our five-year plan that enhances the library's efforts to serve you. Um, and please visit our website for all of the details. The Belmar Housing Authority. Uh, last Friday, the BHA um, had open sealed bids that went out for the facade work. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they'll, they'll probably have to reject the bids as they came in too high. And the lowest bidder, which probably would have been a doable price, backed out. Um, so it's my understanding that at the next meeting, um, they can approve to reject the current bid and approve to go out to bid again. So a little bit of a letdown there. Um, I attended the five-year uh, meeting uh, plan with, um, with uh, our mayor uh, in attendance, and he offered some really good ideas for routine maintenance on carpet cleaning, painting, and vent cleaning, um, and security. I was told today that the final testing for Jersey Elevator in the security company is tomorrow. Uh, all the wiring is complete, and once the final testing is done tomorrow, the BHA can schedule state inspections. That will be the last piece before they actually can use the elevator. Um, so let's all, you know, send positive thoughts that that inspection goes quickly. Um, as you might have read, the BHA will receive $676,000 in federal appropriations. Uh, for the critical building repairs of the senior building. Uh, we'd like to thank Congressman Smith again for requesting the funding on behalf of the borough through HUD's Community Development Fund. Uh, it was an honor to work on this request with Executive Director Paul DeSantis, the Board of Commissioners, Deputy Chief of Staff um, to Chris Smith, Joe Schloter, and all the local representatives and nonprofits in the area that went to bat um, for the funds to secure better conditions for our residents. Uh, these funds will be used towards securing the facade and other urgent updates. Thanks. Thank you, Councilman Rondonero. I'm, I'm thinking about maybe in, instituting the five-minute rule for the council. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sorry. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> council President, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a reminder, um, if you have a boat slip at the marina, your final payment is due by March 31st, or they will go to one of the wonderful people who are on the wait list. We're looking for slips, so make sure you should make your final payment uh, in the portal by March 31st. Uh, Friendly Sons of the Shillelagh are having their third annual polar bear plunge. It's going to be Saturday, April 27th at 1 p.m. down at 18th Ave and Ocean Ave. It's a $50 entry fee, or if you raise $100, you get a sweatshirt. And uh, I'll be plunging, so if anybody wants to donate to see me jump in the cold water, um, let me know. Um, and also, we had a great you know, basketball team with St. Rose. Uh, there were a couple of Belmar Elementary students who are now at Manasquan High School who did really well as well for their basketball this, um, teams. And I just want to recognize them as well. Manasquan High School girls team 
uh, won the state uh, state championship uh, second title or second division uh, about two weeks ago. And that's Hope. Uh, I'm going to try to pronounce this name. I'm going to kill it. Masonius and Rosie Latesta uh, of Belmar contributed very well to that team. We also had uh, a Belmar Elementary uh, school graduate, Ray Weinsheimer, was chosen as freshman of the year for the Shore Conference, uh, helping the Manasquan Boys Central Jersey uh, uh, Championship as well. So I'd like to recognize them. Well, that's all I have there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I have one one announcement. We will be starting the Mayor's Wellness Campaign kickoff on April 7th in the Taylor Pavilion. We're going to have a health fair, uh, and the time will be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And we encourage everyone to go. You can have your your blood pressure checked, uh, glucose checked. Um, there'll be uh, ability to get vaccinations. Uh, some of our local businesses will be there, health-related. Dr. Kenny will be one of those businesses and um, so it's a you know it's a it's a good opportunity to take advantage of free things that are coming uh, regarding health so that was uh, April 7th uh, 11 to 2 p.m. jail pavilion and I think that's all I have but I'm going to actually add one thing that I should have done in the, in the um, in the workshop because I know I'm going to preempt somebody's question and it's either for the be a cane or the chief. I've gotten about a million, cold, no, not a million. Uh, people want to know if we can get the light at Fifth Avenue to a blinker. And I don't, I'm sure, is that a state run light? Or? I believe so. I can look into it. All right. Would you look into yep. that? So I just cut out, I think, about 10 comments at the end of the. <laughs> the, end of the I was actually and, thinking that when I was stuck at it the other day. Yeah. yeah it should be, it should be, uh, it should be a blinker. Yep. We're not waiting for anything. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, that's all I have. So uh, I guess we're moving on to the public session. If anyone from the public would like to comment on one of the resolutions listed on the agenda, please step forward, state your name and address. <coughs> Actually, going to be two years and what, six, seven months. So it's a multi-year lease. But the term, since we didn't start on January 1st, the term starts on May 15, 2024. So it's for all the rest of 2024, all of 2025, and all of 2026. And each year, the um, the lease amount would be fifteen thousand dollars. A minimum of fifteen. Minimum. Yeah. Fifteen thousand. So it's it's not a three year lease, but it's like a two and a half year lease. But okay. each and the and I, I was just asking that, and the bidders will get a, a copy of the lease agreement, which explains that, and that they they have to be open for at least uh, what would we say five months from yeah, May first from uh, October, May first to October October first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, it is a little confusing the way it's written, but it's it's for that whole term. Okay. So, Gene, that's an old copy of the resolution, it, so that we had caught that typo and fixed it. May 15th. Yeah, May 15th. Yeah, May 15th is when it when it would start. But yeah, it's a multi-year lease, and then it could be it could uh, be renewed for two more one-year terms, so for a total of five five years. 
And it started May 15th this year because of the, um, the construction that we're doing right. with the bathrooms. Right. And if people wanted to stay in all year, could they? Uh, I think we, we discussed that, yes. Okay. They could. So that is an option yeah. for Yeah, in other words, if somebody it. wanted to open in April, you know, because we had a great week or whatever, oh. once they're in the lease, they could do that. But we would like them, you know, the lease as it is, definitely from May 1st to October 1st. It's up to the um, person who's running the business. Okay. Uh, excuse me, it doesn't have to be a business. It's going to be a um, food, food, uh, food service business. Okay. Uh, that, that's what it's limited to. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. And, okay. and uh, the uh, successful uh, bidder, uh, you're going to get the certificate of occupancy. They have to pay for that. No, if they're going to move equipment there and so on, I believe that, that there has to be a certificate of occupancy. Um, I would presume yes, whatever it is. Yes, we need to get a, a tenant fit-out permit and a mercantile license. Okay. Okay, and they're responsible for utilities. Mm -hmm. okay. And they can't rent the pipes freeze. <laughs> they better not freeze. <laughs> I, I, no, no, we, we are, you know, in the, in the uh, renovations that we're doing, we're, trying to make sure that they won't freeze, you know. Okay, so the pipes are going to be uh, heat traced, in other words. Uh, I don't know exactly what, how they're going to do it, but that was one of the specifications we, we required with the uh, renovation. Okay. The reason I'm asking that, I, I think the pipes have frozen in there at least twice, as, as far as I, I'm aware of. Uh, right. You know, we didn't have a real cold winter this winter, but uh, it doesn't mean we're not we could. Okay, thank you very much for the no. And I'll just point out one other thing while we're talking about it. If you notice, it's going to be um, it's going to be uh, awarded a little differently. We're going to have a public bidding at public auction, so the bidders will come to a council meeting, uh, and the first thing they will do is we will have the the auction for the lease. So they will, you know, whoever wants to bid gives them gives the deposit, and then we we'll conduct in public what the, uh, the bid amounts are and, and ultimately it will be awarded that night. And when is that? That's on um, April 30th. So bring your popcorn, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> sit back and relax. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? saying it's like for like a, a year and a half, like or a couple seasons. What if, you know, like no bids come in and somebody just wants it for like one season? Is that, are we going to open it up to that or are we just going to say, nope, we're not renting it? I would rather not answer hypothetical questions because... All right, then I hopefully don't... we'll just have a plan then in place or thought about that if that hypothetically comes up, that we'll have a solution. We'd have to rebid it. Because the bid as it's going now is a three, two and a half to three year lease. If nobody bids, I mean, then we're back to square one, correct, counselor? Yeah, and a three year bid gives people more time to, to right. recoup their fit out. So. But I mean, if no one decides to bid on like any project, like then you have to yeah. stop. Like last year, square yeah, one. we're back to figuring out what we can right. do. Because hasn't the past few years been a loss for people? Okay. I don't know. I don't I've heard. So, all right, just hopefully we'll be prepared. Hopefully, yes. It sounds like, if I'm not mistaken, it sounds like more time that they would be able to be in their business and have access to their business um, than, it, than it did in prior years um, and, you know, for less money overall um, for the concession folks. Any other comments? Okay. Can I have a motion to close the public session? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Can I have a motion to approve the resolutions as listed on the consent agenda? Motion. Second. Councilman Donovan? Yes. Councilman McKinney? Yes. Mayor Bob Pusco? Yes. Councilman Rondonero? Yes. Councilman Levin? Yes. Uh, next we have ordinance 2024-3. This is an ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and have established a cap bank. Could I have a motion to offer this ordinance for first reading and introduction? Motion. Second. 
Councilwoman Donovan? Yes. Councilwoman Kinney? Yes. 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 Councilman Romanero? Yes. Councilman Levin? Yes. That is all of our agenda items. Now open for a public session. If anyone would like to speak, please remember to state your name and address first. Always wear wrist guards. I need a five Buckley, First Avenue. Um, as we know, we had a disaster in Maryland at the bridge uh, today. It's very tragic. And as you know, our Ocean Avenue bridge at this very moment has no bumpers. That is exactly uh, what happened in Maryland. The ship hit the bumpers. And the bumpers are due to be replaced, but I think we should uh, be well aware of this and we should be calling the county and making sure that this is happening in a timely fashion because as I said, as, at this very moment, there are no bumpers on the, I don't know, the supporting foundations for the bridge. So should anything hit, the structural damage on the bridge would be it's something, you know, according to, close to Maryland. Also, the railings, if you, anybody, I suggest everybody, walks over the Ocean Avenue Bridge on the east side, the ocean side, and examines the railings because the rust and the deterioration um, at one point, it is rusted and deteriorated on both connecting pieces, so there's absolutely nothing holding it together. And that's a scary thought. I'm here to be, I'm always pro proactive. You can't, you can't measure what didn't happen, but you can measure what happened today in Maryland. So I think that should really uh, bring, us, bring our attention to our bridges. Um, can I ask, does anybody know why there is no boat traffic for the last three weeks? There's absolutely, I live, at, I live in an apartment on the inlet, and the boats go out every day, seven o'clock in the morning, and they wake me up, it's my little alarm clock, and there's been absolutely no boat traffic for three weeks. Nobody? I don't know why. Is there any, no, do we get any information on the state, on the, uh, the bridge on Main Street? Do we get any updates on what's going on or anything? Do they, do they talk? I know it's the state, I know the Main Street Bridge is state, so does the state talk to you and say what's happening? No, actually, I'm sorry, can you hear? Actually, we had a meeting with Monmouth County last week with, uh, with uh, Belmar, Avon, and the county on that specific uh, detail. So, on the Ocean Avenue Bridge? Main Street. The Main um, Street Bridge. Because the whole, the whole thing is we need to know exactly what's going on. So we had a, a meeting with the director of our known and county engineer, Joe Latour, with the idea, trying to figure out Engineering, county engineering is going to be working with the state, with DOT, to find out exactly what's going on. Last we heard, they were still surveying the structure because there's significant structural damage to the bridge, and they were still assessing how they're going to repair it and what the plan was going to be. But as of, like, Chief, I don't know if you've heard anything, but we haven't heard anything since that statement that came out from DOT. Well, my apartment faces the inlet. That's the inlet right there. The boats come right out every morning, every day. So it's beautiful. I love it. Not one boat, not one charter boat, not one, not one little boat has been out in the last three weeks. So something's going on. You'd have to bring it up with them, Anita. They, we don't tell them that well, they can't go out. The weather's been very poor. No, I'm not, tell, I'm not saying too. that boats don't go out. It's saying that there's something else going on. But we are almost an island. Belmar is almost an island, and we live and breathe with our bridges. So I just want to call this to everybody's attention. I think things are, you know, the, the we're clearly the Main Street Bridge is needed to be fixed. Clearly the Ocean Avenue Bridge needs to be fixed. And that's not even on a list to be replaced, so you know. They're just going to repair and repair and repair, and that's 150 years old. So we live by our bridges. You want the marina to be this big, incredible, wonderful thing. We don't have bridges. The boats can't, you know, like, it, it all has to go together. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. I just wanted to add, too, that I, I did have a meeting um, with, um, where I was in a meeting where the Monmouth County engineer is talking about um, the Ocean Avenue um, bridge and the repairs that it does need. Um, and that is going to happen. Unfortunately, it looks like it's probably going to be October through January. We still will be able to use the bridge as you know, pedestrians, cars will be able to, to go through, um, but it will reduce the width of the channel because they're going to need to get a barge in there to do the fixing. Um, so, so thank you. I know that that is a, a concern. Um, and it does, it, we, they did just have a meeting with the mariners and making sure like, okay, how much space do you need clearance wise um, so that this doesn't affect you. Um, so hopefully we'll have more information on that soon. And just 
Just to clarify, Mrs. Administrator Kane, there is not an end date for Main Street Bridge. We don't know an end time. They're not giving us any any indication at all of a timeline. No, exactly. And that, that was our question. That we were trying to coordinate that with the county and Avon and, and us, Belmar, um, to, to get to DOT, to, to get specific. And, and what they're going to do is what, what the county suggested through their engineering department. They're going to get updates from DOT, post on their website, and send it to us so we can post it on our, just to keep everybody updated. We, we said we need continuous communication on this. Uh, I, I, from what we understand in talking to DOT, uh, they're still assessing and, and, and coming up with a plan because th their term was significant structural damage. So that's where we're at. Thank you. Else? I did just want to add, with, within that meeting, um, I, I advocated for there to be good signage um, for slowing and the no wake uh, rules that happen in that channel because wake will be a consideration once we have a smaller channel for those boats to go through. Thank you. My name is Jim Whalen. I do a Mariner Marina Court. I like to begin by thanking you guys for putting in all the time that you do. I know from experience it's a thankless job. People say nothing when things are going good and when there's complaints to be made, they're right here all the time. So, appreciate your time. Having said that, I'd like to make a few complaints. <laughs> <laughs> I live on Mariner, uh, Marina Port and when I get up in the morning, the first thing I see when I look out my window is the water tower. For eight years, I've been looking at a filthy, disgusting water tower. I believe if someone had a house in such disrepair, the township would be sending them letters and making them get up to standard. Uh, I'd like to know, is there anybody going to clean that or paint it or do anything to it? It's like a big advertisement that Belmont is not doing their job. If you ride around other towns, everybody's water tower is looking good, except ours is needs a paint job badly, and it's filthy dirty. Anybody? I agree with you 100%. Um, the thing is, we, um, you know, we would like to do everything at once, but, you know, there are priorities, and then there are priorities. So, um, you know, we had initially, oh, going back when we first started, conversations with Verizon about uh, putting, painting the tower and putting up some more of their antennae up there and uh, obviously when we started uh, harassing them about the 5G poles that kind of went down the tubes so um, it's a it's a pretty big expense I, I forget what the, the estimate is to, to paint that because there's a lot more than painting that needs to be done yeah, and in addition terms to of painting it's filthy dirty it's all mold on the bottom of yeah. it. so I, I challenge anybody to find the water tower anywhere in worse condition than what we have here in Belmont. Well, we, you know, we have it on our list of, of infrastructure things that need to be done. Well, that so, needs to be done. So, you know, we will get to it. Well, okay. yeah. Next thing is, a couple of weeks ago, there was a guy presenting a plan for McCleary Park, and he was going to put in new pickleball courts. I think everybody's aware of that. I wonder if they, they speak to anybody that plays pickleball before they come up with this plan? Uh, we have had requests from people who wanted more well, I'll pickleball tell you what, courts there. If you look at that park, there's tennis courts, and then there's three pickleball courts mm -hmm. that were made. They took away one of the tennis courts and converted it to three pickleball courts. Those courts are now in very bad shape. They're in disrepair. And the plan that was presented was to add three more courts but if you notice, the courts that they presented are perpendicular to the tennis courts. So those courts, the pickleball courts, should be laid out in the same configuration as the tennis court, as the tennis courts, because the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So when you play pickleball on the courts that are there now and on the courts that are proposed, the sun is going to be in your eyes in the morning and in the evening. Whereas if you play tennis, the sun is not in your eye at either time. Tennis courts were done properly. The pickleball courts were done improperly. 
and now there's a plan to put in three more pregnant war courts that again are going to be laid out the wrong way. They should turn them around so the sun's not in your eyes. Pickleball courts are very well used. I, I don't know if you go there in the summer. Go there at 8 o'clock in the morning in the summertime, there's 40 people fighting there. And the sun's in your eyes. So if they would just turn the courts quarter turn, the sun wouldn't be in your eyes. But the, court, the, 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 the plan that was presented here is making the same mistake of having the courts east-west as opposed to north south. So I think we I think we spoke with the engineer about that and one of the issues and we can speak to him again about it was the fact that you you'll get fewer courts in uh, if you do the, the east west designation. But was that we the, told the, the, gym about the original that? Um, suggestion coming from the people that play pickleball there was to take another tennis court and convert it. So instead of doing that, what we proposed through this grant application was just leave the three tennis courts, but add three more pickleball in, in that same footprint. Just using that same design, because you have that, you have that, that pavilion there. Right, but so if, you, if, you, if you look at it, the tennis courts are laid out this way. So they're, they're on an east-west, right? If, so if you go there and play tennis in the morning or in the afternoon, sun's not in your eyes. If you go there and play pickleball, which are perpendicular to the tennis courts, the sun's in your eyes. Yeah, we, we were just trying to seems like It seems like a trivial thing, but if you're playing pickleball and you look up and you see the sun instead of the ball, that's yeah, not good. The idea was trying to maximize space using that same footprint as a tennis court and get three more pickleball courts instead of taking another tennis court. Mm -hmm. Right, but, if, but if, it's, if it's new construction, you could lay it about any way you want. It's limited space. But we'll, we'll take a look. look at it. I mean, I think the other thing is uh, we're not even sure we're going to get that grant. I mean, it's yeah. all subject to, to the approval. Okay. So the courts that are there are really Apparently what they did with the three pickleball courts is they took one of the tennis courts and they just laid something over it. Well, whatever they laid over, it's all coming up. There's all bubbles in it. Uh, the tennis courts are still in very good shape, but those three pickleball courts, which are much more used than the tennis courts, are falling apart. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any other comments? Jim Lonergan, 109 6th Avenue. Um, I agree with what Joe just said. I would tell you from a budget perspective, I go and play pickle often. There's never anyone on the tennis courts. Just take the other tennis court over, save yourself some money, redesign it, and you're good to go. It's really, it's a select demand issue, and I don't think you need to build out further, probably cut some trees down to do that, et cetera. I'd probably recommend just taking the tennis court, the one closest, rejigger the whole thing, and you'll solve it and save some money. So. Uh, I'm here for uh, my third time about the geese. I can't believe I'm here, I can't. Um, as much as there's planning, I watched that video, I watched the session some months ago, we still have a problem. So 18 months later, or 15 months later, we are still in the same position with geese, you know what, all over the place. They're more than ever. Uh, the last couple of days, uh, a car has been pulling up around the lake. I don't know if you've noticed it. But it's, um, it's a, a gentleman we found out, and he's uh, in the dark, uh, lights on, and he's trying to hit his laser to get rid of the geese. So my wife actually was out there, and he was doing an ask her questions, and explained, I'm doing this because I live on 10th Ave. I'm so disgusted with what's going on with this for forever, and he's doing it on his own. And the problem he has is he's doing it at 6.30 in the morning, and there's no geese there. They're, they're, they're hidden or whatever, they come out. So I'm here though for the last time because I know there's a plan in place. I know the things are out there. We, we kind of think the, uh, uh, the birds actually are attracted more to that thing, the, the, the blinker, the um, uh, laser. But at some point, and I think we're at that point, people around the, the whole lake, it's a lot of neighbors, are fed up with, okay, you can say there's a plan, you can talk about a plan, but all the geese, 15 months later, are still there. They're still etched on, you know, on, on, the, on the sidewalk and everywhere else. So I guess the question is, and I know there's an environmental discussion. I heard about that. I watched that. But at the end of the day, when's something going to happen? Or, which I'm giving you an option, or the residents around the lake, who've had an informal discussion, are happy to take this burden off the council, save you some money, and take care of it ourselves. And no, it doesn't mean we're going to kill the geese, so don't go there. But we can handle it ourselves. We know how to resolve it, and it's easy. So if you want to stop the process and let us take care of it, 
we will do, or in fact, we can just do it. There's nothing that's doing anything differently today. Little boats in the water, dogs are chasing them right now, anyway, they're doing it as, as we speak, and uh, the lasers, and everyone's gonna buy lasers, and we'll do it ourselves, and it takes the burden off. So can we now, and I wanna ask, but are you gonna think in the next month or two this will be solved, or should the residents take care of themselves? Again, I'm not asking. What's your definition of solved? There How is the geese problem solved in your mind? Yeah, I know. I talk to environmentalists. I've heard about listening. No, I'm asking you, what, what, what would make the, you come boats back boats and boats say, in the water, please let me talk? Well, I was talking, actually. Boats in the water. No, I'm answering your question. Go. go ahead. What, in your mind, is a solved problem? Geese away. You keep doing it when they come back. You know the deal. The whole idea is No, I don't know the deal. The whole, idea doing is that. Make, the whole idea is to make the geese extremely uncomfortable. Period, right? So, that, and I've talked, I've already through this with you. I've talked to the mayor and administrators of the other towns, and generally they're gone, right? They've been gone for a while. They have a salon. They come know. back. They eventually come back. That. I know that. But I've talked to them. And I'm just telling you, that's what we've done. So, we would follow the same process that the person that's doing all that, we would do it ourselves. And it's the same thing. Boats in the water, dogs are that we're walking around anyway, chasing them in. And third but not uh, least is the lasers from every house that we need to have. Everyone's agreeing to do it. So I think we'll do it, and I'm just going to say, don't even bother. We'll take care of it. Because clearly the town, after 15 months, hasn't solved this problem. And it's a, it's a disgusting problem. I think everyone's fed up with how disgusting it's walking out. I'll send you pictures tomorrow so you can kind of see how disgusting it is around there. So I, 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 I don't even know. You think it'll be solved shortly, or at least whatever we define solved to be? Or we should probably take it up ourselves and deal with it. The Environmental uh, Commission has a plan. We're moving through with that plan. And I think it's been working. We've reduced the number of geese. And uh, you think it's you think the geese? You have 48 seconds left, by the way. I'll come back. I'll go um, I would just like to say, um, Mr. Lonergan, thank you for your comments. Um, I, I appreciate your frustration. Um, I'd be curious, and maybe we can talk after the meeting what you meant by solving it yourself, if you're just talking about supplementing the existing plan, or if you had something else in mind, I'm open to hearing whatever you want to say. Um, I can't see you right now, I'm so I can't sorry. tell you. But um, I know we've been tracking, all the volunteers have been tracking the number of geese at the lake. We know that there has been a significant reduction. I agree with you that I wish that there is a little bit more cleanup on, on the sidewalks and, and things like that. That would certainly be a better step in the right direction. Um, we will be starting the egg addling soon, so that'll be a good thing. I know there's been a ton of brands on the lake. I don't know what to tell you about that, except they are migratory. They won't be here for very much longer, as far as I know. Um, but more, more volunteers, the, the better, I think. I would love to also see a permanent staff solution on, at the administrative level here as well. Joe Mangione, 203 South Lake Drive. I'll say this politely, Mayor. You seem to be confused. You work for the people. They don't work for you. So yelling at the people in town is not appropriate, number one. Number two, I'll take this 48 seconds online. This is really simple. Go look at the lake on the south end of town. That's what it looks like. There's no geese. I go there all the time to check. There's no geese. Nothing's been done. You're all talking in circles. We'll take it on ourselves. But that, that, that action is totally inappropriate. And you should apologize to him for that. This, this is ridiculous. I've been there for 18 years. The geese are worse. Don't tell me they're less. I sit in the front of that house and I see them. I can't let my grandchildren play outside because there's geese crap all over the place. So all this talk about it, we're going to do the eggs, we're going to do this, we've got a plan, it's all nonsense. Look, I come from Staten Island. I know when politicians double talk and what we're getting is double talk. So we're going to do something or we'll, we'll do something appropriate and we'll take care of it. Any other comments? I would just like to say I, I also understand the, the frustration and believe me, not a politician, but an observer. We really do have a lot of volunteers who are working hard on this, um, who understand your frustration and are trying this new laser system out and giving it their best. Um, and you know, we thank them for, for doing what, they, what they're doing. Um, and we hope that it does you know, show um, some results. One of the things I want to comment too is, you know, I'm responsible for maintaining the decorum at these meetings. Yeah, right. And when, when someone is speaking, you know, I don't speak. But when I'm speaking, 
I don't know why some people think that they can then speak. Okay, so uh, that's the reason why I interrupt people. Because when I have the mic, uh, I'm doing the talking. Okay, when you have the mic, you're doing the talking. Okay, we should not be interrupting each other, and that's what it means to maintain the core. Okay, sir, we didn't, we didn't, I didn't recognize you yet. I was just, I just came back. Okay. Out. Okay. Interrupting is one thing. Raising your voice to citizens in this town is not appropriate. So you can talk all you want about it. There's no reason to raise your voice. I've seen you do it to other people, men and women in this meeting. And enough is enough. Act like an adult. Are there any other comments? Tom Volker, 8th Avenue. <coughs> Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. Uh, there was a process, I believe uh, Brian McGovern handled it beautifully. Um, his process, I hope I'm not misquoting him, was to locate the eggs and oil them so they wouldn't hatch. Um, he, I believe he was uh, effective in, in what he did. Um, is that not legal or something? I mean, is there a reason why you're, you know, you're not doing that? Uh, yes, we actually yeah, will be going out. There'll be a team of four of us, me, Mr. Musto, Mr. McGovern, and uh, Mr. Ed Lippincott will be going and addling the eggs on April 3rd. So that's, that is okay. that's Good. happening. Thank you. Jim DiOrio, 217.8. I'd just like to make a statement of fact. The geese problem didn't start 15 months ago. I live a block from the lake. It was there before. So anyone who says this is a problem in the last 15 months hasn't been around. And if you look two years ago, the problem was worse and very little was done. So as a resident, we're going in the right direction. And to arbitrarily set January 1, 2023 as the beginning of the problem is very misleading. So I don't know if I'm off base, but the geese problem was there before. Yeah, I, I've said, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times that my daughter, who is now eight, used to make her, we carry her over the sidewalk, and she used to call it Goose Poop Park. So it goes back a little bit, but like I said, I want to em emphasize, I'm really very, very open to hearing anything the residents have to say. I would love your feedback. I am open to your ideas and suggestions. Well, Sincerely. I think we're trending in a I positive so. I, and way. That I've gotten positive feedback, um, but I, I'm happy to hear the negative as well. So. Well, if <laughs> anything short of get, grounding them up and gassing them, I mean, that's a permanent solution, which I don't think anyone on the board wants to do. And it's the, not and really permanent. That, yeah, well, and the, and the, the temporarily problem, permanent. Yeah, temporary. As I said, you know, yeah. these have wings. They'll, they'll come in, and they will come out. And this is going to be something we talk about forever. It was, it, and I don't mean that just in Belmar. I mean, I, every town in North America is talking about yeah, I mean, some it people call them flying rats. I mean, but, they just, they're a nuisance. So, you know, speedy, we care. I've been out there with the laser. You do have to get there early while it's still uh, low light. And you can go out there in the morning. And during the day, we've had um, volunteers with drones chasing them off. And it's really effectively. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Barry Lubin, 15th Avenue. Um, I am the guy that's been there at dawn for the last two days with the laser. And I don't know what you're seeing. I don't know if it was your wife that I spoke to this morning, but this morning, there was no geese out. Yeah, 8.30, 8.30 on they come, trust me. I look okay, the street. well, what I've been taught is the laser works, yeah, sorry, the laser works at dawn. You cannot use that laser after 7, 7, 10, after the sun is up. So 
I would love to be more involved, you know that, mm -hmm. to help. But my question to the residents who are kind of being uh, snarky about the time that it's taken and nothing's been done, but this is the first time, and I've been coming to council meetings for a while now, this is the first time I've heard anything from the residents that they would like to help. Maybe it's not, but it's the first time I've personally heard. So, that's it. Barry Sullivan, 96 Fifth Avenue. Um, I just want to say that I don't feel like nothing's been done. I've spoken to Ms. Donovan several times, and I appreciate the fact that they're trying to get things done. The thing is that the lasers, again, as the gentleman said, they're useless in the daytime. They can keep the geese from getting comfortable sleeping on the lake, but in the daytime is when they eat, in the daytime is when they poop. And those brand geese, there was over a hundred of them on that field today. Um, if you talk about what the, again, what the federal government says that they do about a pound and a half per day per goose, you've got a hundred geese out there. My grandchildren were here, they went to the park, and they came back, had to clean their sneakers. It's just ridiculous. I mean, it's still a problem, and we need more than lasers. Um, again, I would volunteer to help in any way. I had my <coughs> son's dog for 10 days, and she loved to chase him, and that was great, but uh, she's gone back home again to Pennsylvania. So um, I think they really do need to hire somebody with dogs because that seems to be what does it and it's never going to be permanent whatever you do it's always going to be a, a maintenance issue but it's just it's gotten so far out of control and it's not just a nuisance it's dangerous again it's 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 deadly and those kids on that big lawn after school they come and practice soccer and track and they're running through this stuff and it's just it's not right it's something more so you're not doing anything, but something more needs to be done. That's all. Yeah, I will say I've seen a whole lot of ramps. You're absolutely right. And I mean, I only learned about it, but it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but uh, my, I've been told repeatedly that they're migratory and will be fairly soon. I hope that's the solution to that problem. But I, I, I agree with one underlying sentiment here, which is that if this doesn't work and we will evaluate it as we go along, then obviously, yes, we need a new plan. We're not going to keep trying the same thing and have it not work. So, you know, we're all in this. Our, our sleeves are very much rolled up. And, and, you know, we're here for you guys. Please stay in touch. Please, please get back to us when we are working for you. I promise you that. If anyone has found a municipality anywhere in the United States, that has been able to keep geese off of a piece of property for 24-7, I would like to know, and the Environmental Commission would like to know, you know, because it is a problem throughout the United States and Canada. And uh, I've been doing research, the Environmental Commission has done extensive research, and as far as I have seen, there is no way short of having 24-7 patrols of individuals or dogs to keep geese from flying in to, uh, to a particular area. So if you can find some place in the United States or Canada or Europe where they have found a magic bullet to keep this uh, geese problem under control for 24 hours uh, every day, 365 days a year, then please let us know because we will uh, try to do that. My, uh, I'm the next door to Brian McGovern. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you the geese problem was tremendously mineralized when he was out there virtually every day with, with Cam and his boat and the dog. So there, there is a, a manual, if you want to call it a manual solution, it's, it's labor intensive, but it wasn't perfect, but it was much, much better than it is now. And I, and I will tell you that talking to, I'm sorry, um, talking to Mr. McGovern, he actually said that he wished that we had had those amber lights on the lake long before because he thought that they were so effective. 
So I will defend those. those I'm not saying the lights are negative or positive. I'm just saying the observation of living right there and watching you. And he was out there, and I admit, twice a day, a lot of work, boat, dogs, but it minimized the problem. Mm -hmm. Just like we're rebidding for new bids for the senior building, can we rebid for a dog service? Can, is that an option for us to try again? I mean, because it did seem like it worked when there was a multi-pronged approach. Is that a possibility? The, the issue with dogs is the fact that it's the same thing as the lasers. When the dogs leave, the geese return. The dogs get to eventually know the truck that comes with the dogs. I mean, the geese get to know the, you know, and so you're, everything is a temporary solution because they fly. So they just they fly away and they wait and then they come back because the dog service is not going to be 24 hours a day. You know, we could have them there at 8.30 in the morning and they can chase 200 geese away, but then at 2 o'clock somebody's going to say, oh my God, look at all the geese that are on the thing. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very, very uphill battle to try to get rid of them. We'll say anecdotally, and it's almost funny because I, I had heard that about dogs before, but now there's those of us who have been volunteering down there in the East really do know us. And just like I step out onto like the lawn and they just fly as soon as they see my minivan and they, they know. Well, which they is said, kind of funny. I'm sorry, having the experience of living there and watching it, it, it did reduce the, it did it wasn't perfect. I'm not, I'm not claiming yeah. 100%, but it was. And I, I fully support using any methods that we have available. That's what I'm just suggesting. Yeah. Could talk, have a long talk with Brian because he, he really, I'm going to say solved the problem, but he went a, a long way towards solving the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Can we approach this from another angle? Can we get a service that cleans up the food? There's like when duty calls and all that other stuff. While you're working through all the other, while you're working through all the other, did you say that there's a place called When Duty Calls? Yeah, there's services that come out. There's services that come out to clean up your dog poop, and they do the same thing with these poop. So I mean, it, it, I, I don't know how it would work or whatever, but if you were going to pay for a dog instead of paying for a dog, it maybe both. But if we just approach it from, if the poop is the problem, if we can just get the poop cleaned up while you're working on everything else, because it is a major problem, it's a worldwide problem, you're, we're not going to solve it. The geese are not going to go away unless we don't have grass, you know, unless we get rid of all of our grass all around town, the geese are not going away. So, I mean, if we just think about it from the other side, I don't know how much any of that costs, I don't know how it works, but there are services that will come around and clean up your poop. Thank you. There are machines also, I, I had done some research on, um, on a, a machine that, that can pull with a, with a small tractor that will, will do that. And uh, many people use it in the, uh, that have horse farms or, and whatever, and they use it in the, um, whatever they're called, the training areas. And they, instead of doing it by hand, you pull this thing. It's kind of like a, a leaf, you know, thing that you pull and it collects the leaves. Um, again, it's, it's uh, I think the one I found that, one place in New Jersey that you, I think is up in Oakland, New Jersey. And again, I don't know how effective it is, but even with that, you still have the, the possibility that you could clean it today, you know, and um, tomorrow morning you could go and just say, oh, there's, there's more geese poop. You know, everything has its limits in terms of what, what you can do. So, you know, do you clean it once a day? Do you clean it twice a day? Do you clean it once a week? Do you clean it three times a week? You know, it is, is like, it's, it's almost, uh, you know, unlimited because the geese can come back at any time. So, um, unfortunately, I think there's always going to be some level of uh, geese around and some level of their uh, excrement on the ground. And I don't know, like I said, if somebody can figure out a problem, a way to solve this, they'll, they'll be a multimillionaire overnight because it's, it's, it's a problem throughout the whole United States and Canada. This is just something that I don't know. Billy, is there a schedule that, as far as the Silver Lake the cleanup or the, the walkways, how does that work? Because I know DPW works hard to, to clean up the area. Uh, yeah, we do occasionally send someone around the lake just to, uh, just to rake off the path and keep the path clean, but as far as the sidewalks or the uh, or the grass or the landscape, we just just let it be. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
could be. So that maybe that would be worth looking into a service or a, some some sort of machinery if that's not if that's beyond you know um, what we're doing now. Anyone else? Just a quick one, uh, and I guess it's for DPW. Um, is there any chance that we could get a couple more um, um, stay off the dunes signs up on the on the ocean? There, we, I, you know, yeah. it floors me that people. There's a fence there. There's a dune here. And there's seats here, and these people like climb over and walk in. I, I know. I know. Thank you, sir. What, sir? What was your name? Greg, G R E G. Last name Michelena. M I C H E L E N A. Mr. Kramer. All right, Gene Kramer, Fourth Avenue. Uh, nobody mentioned the Easter egg hunt. Uh, that morning, I did take a ride completely around the lake. And uh, on the east end of the lake, there were at least uh, at 100, I would say, Atlantic brand that were there. And on the west end of the lake, there was a couple of, of, of Canada, Canada Keys. Um, I think what we have to keep in mind here, many of these birds are transients. Uh, they belong here. They stop over here on their way to the uh, Canadian Arctic, and they'll stop here on the way going south. Uh, I was brought up, I spent my summers on a farm, and uh, you always had to look at where you were stepping. And what, you know how we handled things at that time? Boots. Don't try to wear your flip-flops when you're walking around an area where, uh, where uh, there's all kinds of animal excrements. There's a little common sense that goes to this. Uh, as far as effective with, with the laser, you know, I, I guess I have a question for the police department, too. Uh, do the police use firearms with uh, laser pointers? Uh, Belmar does it? No, okay. That's it. All right, thanks. <coughs> yes. Hi, Mark Sewer, uh, 405 Third Avenue. I uh, just want to uh, back up the blinking light on Fifth Avenue because that is just crazy. People were waiting for absolutely nothing. <laughs> and uh, uh, a few months back, I questioned the stop sign at the end of Fourth and to see what kind of traffic studies and stuff were done for that. But obviously it works now because the people that can't get the bridge are now firing down River Road right in front of my house. They're doing 50 miles an hour plus, you know, unless the construction people are there working on the two houses that are being done now. Um, it, I've noticed quite a, quite a few times uh, coming around that turn, I hear screeching and cars are flying down to get to the other bridge. And that's, you know, I, I see a little bit of that in the summertime. I see people running through the stop sign that's heading west on 3rd Avenue. And I could just, just guess that maybe a few more police officers would be down, even park a, a dummy car or something down there to slow them down. Because it's, it's really happening a lot now lately. And one other thing, um, I'd like to ask if there could be some sort of a um, traffic camera at the 8th Avenue bridge stoplight. I just had an occurrence this week that really scared scared me. It was a road rage thing. I don't know if I can talk about it. It's under investigation, but um, it just, there was the, the camera I was told is, is in the marina and it can't go through the trees and we would probably had a good shot at the car. You know, that was- This is 8th and 8th and 35? 8th and 35, yeah, right at that stoplight. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it just, it's, it's probably an isolated incident, what happened, but it shouldn't have happened nonetheless, so that's all I got. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else? I just want to reiterate what a successful skate park kickoff we had on Saturday. Um, the biggest complaint 
starting back on September, let's pull this up today, September 7th, 2021, was the skate park. And I sat many, many meetings listening to the complaints, the concerns, the frustration, okay? And Councilwoman Kinney, your whole tenure up here has been listening and working towards the skate park. So thank you very much for all the effort that you have succeeded with and we're looking forward to the next event and continuing your success. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, April. And I have a motion to close the public session and adjourn the meeting. Motion.